Welcome to the Super Spy Podcast. Welcome to Prepare the to be Wow. Everything I'm saying is the truth. What's going on, children of the corn? Hey, look, uh, I, man, it has been a week. It has been a month. It has just been crazy here lately. Uh, you're gonna hear you're gonna hear a lot of buzzing in the background. Um, I'm pretty close to an airport this week, and uh, they're actually, uh, I guess, getting ready for some kind of an air show. And, and because of that, I, I wanted to stay a little lighthearted uh, today. Uh, probably because one, my heart is broken about what is going on in Hawaii. Um, it is just absolutely crazy. Uh, I hate the fact that, uh, we still haven't had someone to just come forward and say, this is what's going on over here. Instead, we're, we're getting a bunch of, uh, again, uh, stories and, and what ifs and things like that. What I, what I can tell you is I am still waiting to hear uh from our officials in uh washington dc to come forward and say hey yeah we're gonna help sure now look don't get me wrong fema has already said yeah they're going to be helping and how convenient it was that the uh, fema director or one of the higher ranking in uh, fema uh was on the island when when this tragedy occurred but that's not what i want to talk about i i i'm hoping that they get the money they need instead of us sending another $24 billion to the Ukraine. So don't get me started. Today I want to go with something that I'm sure is heavy on your heart as much as it is mine. So stand by, get your tissue box ready, because this is going to just eat away at your heart. There is this growing trend of stupidity all around the world. And the funny thing is, this stupidity is caused by um, a few, I'm not even going to say well-meaning, because my goodness, these are some knucklehead people. But uh, there's a show on TV that I frequently watch, because I've traveled the world. And because I've traveled the world, um, there are times that I would like to move to another country. Uh, Central America's on my list. Um, South America is on my list. There's a few places in Europe that are on my list, but uh, it seems to be on the list of other people too. And there's a growing number of Americans that are moving overseas. And for some reason, they find themselves looking for a house on a show called House Hunters International. That's right. House Hunter is international. And if you have not seen the show, please do yourself a, a favor and watch it. But I guarantee you, especially if you have lived overseas before, um, you're going to get pissed off. And I say that, uh, man, it just. OK, here's the deal. If you want to live in another country. Listen to me carefully. Don't expect the country to change, okay? You are the one that needs to change. If you want to move, let's say, to Costa Rica, don't expect Costa Rica to start building houses to your specification. Just adopt that new community that you're moving to and enjoy it. If you are going to another country, here, let me give you a, a, a real life situation here. When I was living in Panama, uh, we did not have these large double door refrigerators with the freezer. Nay, nay. You had a small refrigerator that just held your basic essentials, maybe some butter, um, uh, maybe some cream. But every day, 
you would go and you would purchase your chicken or your whatever you were going to eat, you would buy it for that day. If you wanted sour cream, um, get a different recipe. Because I don't remember ever having sour cream when I was living in Panama. And it's the same, it's the same with many of the Central and South American countries. They do not have these grandiose kitchens and think no. They have the bare essentials. And you cannot sit there saying, oh, I like this house, but oh, something's got to be done with this kitchen. No, that's just America that has these huge kitchens. And well, mm, side note, it could be why we're kind of a heavy nation. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a big refrigerator. You've got open air markets. You've got vegetable stands. You've got everything right there in the little town that you're going to be living in. And that's how they do it. I, in Panama, we used to have a guy that would come at many, many different guys or gals that would come by with carts selling either fresh vegetables or fresh meats. Uh, there was one time that my, my grandmother had wanted a special roast, so she ordered it from the uh, gentleman that was pushing the cart around, and he brought it the next day. It's not like you're going to go to the store and spend $250 to fill up your refrigerator. That's not how that culture works. and it frosts my butt to see these people saying, oh, these kitchens are so small. I don't know. We're going to have to change these. No, don't change the kitchen. Change your lifestyle. This is a different country. This is a different culture. Embrace the culture and shut up or go back to California where you belong. And by the way, it seems that there's a lot of these Californians that are making all these big demands and they do the same thing anywhere in the united states they move they come to uh uh states in the in the south and they're sitting there trying to try to demand change well in california we did it this way then go back to california or or here's here's some of my favorites there were there were, there were couples that were trying to move to berlin uh i lived in berlin and i'm going to tell you they have Decent sized kitchens, but don't look for those those uh, big old Maytag or GE appliances. No, my friend, you're going to get a little bush, uh, what we would call here in the United States a wine refrigerator, and that was that is going to be it. You're lucky if you have um, an oven that would uh, fit a turkey in it, because they don't just they don't use big ovens. Uh, matter of fact, you don't do, need to do any baking in Germany because, my goodness, they have some of the world's greatest bakeries or bakerai, uh, and they are just incredible. The same with the, the food scene. You go to, to a town like, uh, or a city like Berlin, um, gosh, why are you even cooking when you could go downtown and grab yourself a nice meal? Or, or this one. <laughs> Please, someone explain this one to me. Uh, trying to move to Paris um, and, and then complaining because there's no backyard in this place that you want to you wanna get. And you want to make sure it's in the middle of the town and you only want to spend uh, $1,000 a month. In Paris, downtown, nay, nay. You're going to be lucky to get... A, a studio apartment for $2,000. And don't even think that you're going to get anything bigger than a wine fridge for your refrigerator in the kitchen. And you might have a hot plate to cook on. And then you get the bright ones that say, well, uh, do they speak a lot of English in this part of town? It's another country. They probably do speak English since most of the countries I have lived in or studied in or worked in, uh, since most of them actually study English in school, they probably do speak English or at least understand it. 
but screw you. You learn the language. You get out of your comfort zone. You do something to fit in to that culture. My goodness. If you're going to live in another country, then expect to get the full experience and learn some of the language. My first three years in Germany, uh, I, I lived in Bavaria in a little town called Bamberg, B-A-M-B-E-R-G. And it was a great place, and it was there that I started to learn a little bit of German. I, I got a class uh, that, that my work sponsored, uh, but that lasted a week. And what I would do is on the weekends after work, I would hop into a taxi cab and I would tell them, I want to learn German. And I would drive around town and I would learn some German with them. I had one guy, um, matter of fact, his name was Gerhardt. And he, how I had to think about that. And I just, I hit it off with him. He was a really great guy, except he wore socks and sandals. And that just, you know, come on, nerd. Anyway, he would take me to a, to a park. We'd sit there, grab some food. And he would sit there and point at different things. And I would start speaking it. It was a really, really great opportunity to learn the language and study the culture. And later on in, in, in my life, uh, I moved to Berlin and actually enrolled into a German class uh, with the uh, University of Maryland. Uh, yeah, they had a campus there, and it was an immersion course. So as soon as you walked in, the instructor flat out said, you will not speak anything but German in here. And that's the best way to learn. Trust me. And that, that, was, uh, that was a great time. Uh, because that was when the Berlin Wall was coming down. So there was so much going on. I was listening to German radio. I was immersed in the German language. And ich habe ein bisschen Deutsch in Berlin gelernt. Um, and it was, it was absolutely beautiful. So chill out with your demands of trying to change a culture because you can't deal with oh, the busy life in Chicago, or oh my gosh, I want to get away from New York. Oh, but I don't want to live in this apartment. It, it's, it's not like the one in New York. No, you dork. You're in the middle of Jakarta now. You know, go play with your, your, your snakes in the backyard and shut up. But seriously, if you want to see a bunch of morons, and now there's a few of them that will go there and they'll sit there and say, well, these are concessions we need to make if we're going to be living in a foreign country. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the way to approach it. You are in someone else's country. If you want to live there, then enjoy it like a native. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy it like a native. And I think that one of the best things you can do before you even think about moving uh, to a foreign country, go visit and visit for an extended period of time. Make sure you check all the visa requirements uh, because there is a difference between visiting and living. Uh, and, and there are requirements you have to meet. Uh, thankfully, there are some countries that won't let you live in their country until you uh, satisfy requirements of learning the language. Yeah, surprise, huh? Some countries are not taking any new um, citizens. Uh, one of them is Switzerland. Uh, it takes a, it's a, like a 15 years uh, to get a Swiss citizenship if they allow you. And, and there's other countries, too, that well, they're, they're a little bit picky, and rightfully so. It's their country. So go visit for an extended period of time. See if you can't pick up on some of the language, and you will be surprised by trying to speak the language of that country. Um, you're going to make an impression, and people will be, you will see that they will be a little bit more accommodating 
and they will help you a heck of a lot more. And and don't think you could go to London or 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 England anywhere in the UK. Uh, don't go to Scotland. Don't go to Ireland and think, oh, they speak English. Uh, yeah, they do, but we don't. In America, we don't know what it means to, uh, when you bend the boot, you know, you, you don't, you don't know these terms. You have to learn a whole new type of English. English. I got to learn how to talk today. I really got up. Look, I really got upset about this because when I saw this one family telling the, the realtor, they said, it, it, we need a pool. That's all there is to it. We need a pool. And the lady is showing them a house that was a five minute walk from the Pacific Ocean. I'm thinking to myself, what a bunch of morons. No one else in the neighborhood, no one else in that part of that country had a swimming pool. So you're not going to find one. Finally, they ended up going to a, um, a resort uh, type condo area where they had this giant, you know, shared pool. Well, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get if you demand niceties uh, that are only Western niceties. Enjoy the culture that you are moving to. Trust me. After a few years, it will become second nature. So a big thank you to the uh, the people at House Hunters International. It is uh, it, it is just refreshing to see that the uh, the knuckleheads living here in the United States are leaving. But it's a shame that they're going to some of my favorite countries because oh my gosh, that's maybe that's. Maybe that's why we have to uh, uh, we have to pay to travel into Europe now, and uh, they're bringing back uh, visas that we have to we have to have a visa to enter into Europe. It's probably because they got fed up with all the morons that were showing up <laughs> trying to buy a house. Y'all have a good week. Pray for the people in Hawaii. Don't listen to any of the. Uh, uh, of the weird stories guys just wait for the truth to come out because if you notice throughout the news uh the, the news coverage the truth is slow slowly coming out about just about every situation that we've been looking at here lately hey rock stars if you have not picked up your copy of life and times of biff baxter what are you waiting for? Head to Amazon or Barnes & Noble and pick up your copy now. And if you're one of those fancy guys with a Kindle or any other kind of those readers, they are available digitally. And in Get your copy and get it.